You are listening to Rabbi Arya Wolby of Torch in Houston, Texas. This is the Living Jewishly Podcast. All right, welcome back, everybody, to the Everyday Judaism Podcast. Today we're going to learn the halachas, the laws of the 10 days of repentance. The very name of the Aseris Yimei Tshuva, the 10 days of repentance, indicates their purpose, that they are designated for repentance. Shehem Yuchadim L'Tshuva, they're designated for repentance. Every person is obligated at this time, which is the 10 days that we're in right now, between the beginning of Rosh Hashanah and the end of Yom Kippur, to return in complete repentance before Hashem, before the arrival of the great and awesome day of Yom Kippur, already, as the verse states, Lefnei Hashem Titaru, before Hashem you shall be purified. What does it mean, before Hashem? Meaning before the day, the awesome day of Yom Kippur. Also, the verse states, Dishu Hashem Be'imatzo, seek Hashem when He is found. Our sages tell us these days that Hashem is found, so to speak. Hashem is always here, always around, but they're specifically referring to the 10 days between Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. Therefore, during these days, a person must examine his actions and repent from his evil deeds. So if we did something wrong, we have to seek atonement. We have to repent for it. Now, a sin about which a person is in doubt whether he transgressed it or not requires greater repentance than a definite transgression because a person is inclined to have greater regret when he knows with certainty that he had sinned. But when a person is unsure, it's not necessarily going to be the case. Therefore, he has to do greater introspection. V'lechein, karban asham talui. Therefore, for this reason, the asham talui, Offering the guilt offering of doubt must be more expensive than the chatas offering, than the sin offering. During these days, one should increase his Torah study, his mitzvos, his charity, and minimize his business affairs. The great Kabbalist, Reb Moshe Cordovero, the Ramak, would say that these days should be treated like Chol Hamoid. Chol Hamoid, the intermediary days of the holiday, we know we have, for example, in the diaspora, the holiday of Sukkot has two days of holiday, four days intermediary days, and then two days of holiday. But during those intermediary days, it's still holiday. We wear a suit and tie like, like a holiday. We eat a festive meal like a holiday. But we can still drive and we can still do other activities, if it's not Shabbos, to prepare for our second days of the holiday. One should thus perform only essential work during these days. And it is of utmost importance for a person to rectify outstanding matters between him and his fellow, not only between him and God, between us and God, but between us and our fellow man, which there is no atonement on Yom Kippur, even if one repents, until in instances of monetary offenses, he returns the theft or that which he wrongfully withheld from his fellow. And he also must appease his fellow so that his fellow will forgive him. So halacha number one tells us here the awe of these awesome days. These are days of great potential, great opportunity, and we need to utilize them. It is proper for a person to conduct himself during these days with additional stringencies that he does not practice necessarily during the entire year. During this time, we too beseech Hashem that he treat us with undeserved kindness, so we too try to do things which are out of the ordinary as well. Thus, one who all year eats baked bread from a commercial baker who is an idolator should only eat baked bread from a Jew during these days, which is called Pas Yisrael, a bread made by a Jew, prepared by a Jew. And one should also follow other stringencies similar to this. So uh, just a a quick review of this. Uh, Anything that you need to heat up or bake in order for it to be properly edible, like a waffle or any type of uh, you know, roll, they, they sell these frozen rolls and you put them in the oven and then they become ready. They're inedible when they're just out of the freezer or out of the fridge. So those are par-baked 
all of those are considered baked by you because you finalized it. You made it into, a, obviously, they have to be kosher to begin with. But something which is ready-made, like those uh, the bimbo breads or those Sara Lee breads, uh, they're not pastis roll. They're not baked by a Jew, and therefore one should avoid eating those during the 10 days. The idea is we're trying to demonstrate out of the ordinary commitment to the Almighty, just like God is showing out of the ordinary mercy on us during these 10 days. As described previously, in our prayers, in our benching, our grace after meals, and in our Amidah, we add extra blessings and phrases to our prayer. We've mentioned this last week. In our Birkat Amazon and the Grace After Meals, some have the custom of saying throughout the 10 days that the extra supplication of that the compassionate one may he inaugurate this year upon us for goodness and for blessing, not only on Rosh Hashanah, but during the entire 10 days to say that. Noag and Shalom Leos Nesuin, it is customary not to have weddings during these 10 days. Additionally, Bishabbos Shuvah, this coming Shabbos, which is the Shabbos that is between Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, is called Shabbos Shuvah because of the Haftorah, because of the prophets that we read, which is Shuvah Eleiva, Shuvah Eleichem. So we call this Shabbos Shabbos Shuvah. Yeshlikros Lamaftir Adam Chashuv, a distinguished person should be called up to the Torah for that Maftir reading. It is customary not to recite Kiddush Lovana, which is the blessing for the new moon, until Motzai Yom Kippur, till the end of Yom Kippur, because then people are happy about the atonement that they have attained on Yom Kippur, and they'll be dancing in front of the moon and celebrating the moon more appropriately. While previously, before Yom Kippur, we, we are anxious about the heavenly judgment. Others say, on the contrary, that it is good to recite the Kiddush Lovana, the prayer for the moon, and to sanctify the moon before Yom Kippur. In order to increase one's merits before the Day of Atonement. In practice, it all depends on the season. If there is a chance that one would not be able to recite the Kiddush Lavana after Yom Kippur due to impending inclement weather, then he should recite it before. In a place where a person can already purchase the four species for Sukkot, and they're available for purchase for the Sukkot festival, it is custom of scrupulous people, to act with alacrity and buy them early during these days as well. That way you add another mitzvah to your collection before Yom Kippur, before the day of final judgment. So that this precious mitzvah of purchasing the lulav and the esrog and the, the, all the four species should be as a merit before the Day of Atonement. So in conclusion, chapter 130 of the Kitzah Shulchan Aruch, of the abridged Shulchan Aruch, is that we should utilize these 10 days for atonement and to maximize our mitzvah intake as much as possible. As many mitzvahs as we can perform during these 10 days, we should endeavor to pursue.